Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306 back with another very quick teardown. So I recently did this review of the Gamdia's Ares P1, which is an RGB keyboard, and I was in a bit of a rush, so I didn't really get time to, um, to actually open it up, and I thought that this would be something interesting to see uh, what's inside this guy, and I'm really glad that I did, because um, it is different than I thought it would be. <laughs> So here when I open it, um, you can actually see here, this is actually the backlight, which I'm used to seeing basically a solid keyboard, uh, PCB, and like actually discrete RGB LEDs. So what I'm going to do is swing this out and show you guys uh, how the lighting effect looks um, using just an external power supply. And... Look at that. So that is absolutely fascinating. There's just, um, if you look, there's four wires um, attaching this. Uh, basically, it's like a light pipe. And um, it's edge lit from the bottom. You can see the silver tape here. So that's why each of the LEDs are controlled by zone. Basically, there's there's only you know one, two, three, four, five, and then six um LEDs and it looks like there's a recess uh, cut out kind of underneath each one you can see here so yeah um, that's actually a really interesting approach rather than having multiple LEDs um, they basically just have a single one per zone and this is actually a really price effective way of doing this uh, using a cheap um, well not cheap but like an inexpensive um, kind of plastic sheet with um, it looks like laser etched holes or something like that uh, in order to disperse the light up through the keys. So this is actually really good. I definitely did not see this coming. So definitely kudos to their engineers who uh, thought of this. This is a very price effective way of, of accomplishing backlighting many keys. So while we're doing that, just going to uh, dis you know unpower that for a second. You can see the membrane keys. So the way that they're doing this, this is um, just a, like a flat flex, a giant flat flex membrane that all the, um, the keys are going into. And it's pretty interesting. There's basically three layers. There's a separator with little holes and um, the rear, which is kind of the center point in the back. And then the front um, is some more patterns. So hopefully you guys can see. Let me... Yeah, you can see basically there are little circles, and these are all um, conductive traces, basically. And yeah, we can line it up here. And so you can see when I press between the front and the back, the two dots line up there. And when I press, it actually connects the two halves. So that's that's exactly how that works. Oopsie. And um, pretty interesting is I've seen similar... Um, setups in terms of like the membrane and and these rubber domes which provide the actual like tactile um button press sensation but i usually see these uh little rubber membranes are usually glued to the sheet um interesting that these are just kind of free floating there so um i guess this is all placed by machine probably but yeah interesting that's not actually attached but yeah, you can see here the shape of the rubber is such that um, there's a slight springiness to it when you press it. It applies the pressure of the key through the membrane to touch the two halves, basically. And um, yeah, so that is that. Uh, just going to quickly remove this. Okay, so you can see here the um, membrane sheets as I lose a million of these little discs. Yeah, um, if you're going to take this apart, just be careful, because these little guys will go absolutely everywhere. And I'm already missing one. How the heck did that happen uh, here? So yeah, um, you can see there's a metal bar which applies pressure uh, from these membranes um, to carbon carbonized tracks on this little PCB here and this is the main controller and it looks like there's a um, an epoxy blob on the main chip and then 
what appears to be a 8-pin Soic, I'm going to guess this is actually where the configuration for your lighting effects and the, um, the patterns are stored. Uh, so basically, this is what is used to store whenever you uh, reconfigure the lighting effects. It'll remember it, basically. And you can see there's a, uh, a Molex connector that goes off to the ribbon for the backlight itself. And there's um, some LEDs that are uh, lit on the other side. Let's just carefully... There we go. So I can bring this closer. Yeah, there's some um, board mount LEDs that actually go through the board, shine all the way through to the other side, and those uh, light up the indicators for like the caps lock and whatnot. And um, yeah, I can kind of see already um, the domes for the the upper keys for like the media, play, pause, and all that are actually quite a bit smaller. And maybe that has to do with the, the fact that um, they feel you know, a bit spongier and, you know, different than the actual keys themselves. But yeah, you can see there's pretty much nothing on this side. Everything's on here and just some passives and that's it. You are good to go. Yeah, anyway, I just wanted to do a quick uh, teardown and show you guys what's inside this because I was not expecting um, the way that this was backlit. So yeah, anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this quick teardown. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.